There are people in our area who relive the moment they thought they were going to be killed by a gang of robbers. The bad guys shove guns in the faces of people in places we all frequent, like a bank and a gas station. The clue that helped police crack this case is a fingerprint in a very unusual place. In a story you will see only here on Local 12, Deborah Dixon shows us how the trail of terror was stopped. Terror inside this first financial bank in Deer Park was the beginning of a robbery spree that could not compete with technology. Days after the bank robbery, gunmen with the same aggressive M.O. robbed three stores in one night. The Marathon on Kirby, Circle K in Covington, and UDF on North Bend Road. They were methodical in what they did. There were steps that they took to conceal the evidence. Um, certainly they didn't leave fingerprints behind, they wore gloves. Um, you know, the masks to disguise their faces, but you know, through the technological advances out there in the crime lab, we were able to develop evidence to link them to all that stuff. That technology came into play after a tip. Two men were selling guns out of a car in Price Hill. With the guns, a backpack with Halloween masks inside, just like the ones worn in the Deer Park bank robbery. Alonzo Baltimore and Richard Scott were arrested after Scott ran through backyards with this gun in his hand. It is traced back to this woman, Clarissa Lowe, arrested earlier this week at the Pleasant Ridge School where she works. She bought it, gave it to him, and he used it in crimes. Cell phone video provides a creepy clue about those guns in the car, a clue video CSIs turned into evidence. I uh, stay right there. I ain't going nowhere. Those guns belong to Milton Detloff. Cell phone video shows him duct taped by robbers. With guns pointed at him, he tries to open his gun safe. One of the two robbers uses his cell phone as a light and accidentally records the crime and Milton's fear. Uh, that's the keys. There's the combination. Where's the combination? That right card. There. That's right here? Yeah. When a technician in Cincinnati's video crime unit looked at the recorded crime scene frame by frame, he found what else the robber recorded, his own fingers. Usually criminals are leaving their fingerprints behind. In this case, we had the actual finger. So it is different and it was exciting in this office. A latent fingerprint expert lifted the print in a different kind of way, entered it in the database and found a match to Alonzo Baltimore. This is the first time that we've ever done this in Cincinnati. I've also called our lab, the ATF lab, and they've said that they've never seen anything like this. They're very, very surprised, amazed. That fingerprint, touch DNA, and E-trace, the traced recovered guns back to the buyer than to the criminal who used them, is why six people now face federal gun and robbery charges. And it seemed as if their crimes are becoming more bold, uh, more brazen, more violent, and they're just going to keep going until they, they stop. Or killed someone. Or killed someone, right. Milton Detloff thought he was going to be killed that night. These kids today, they don't care. They think it's a badge of honor to shoot somebody. And it this, is. And this, this stays with you, doesn't it? Yeah. It stays with me every day, every minute. A violent robbery gang broken up. Good news, Milton says, but it doesn't give him back what the robbers took that night. They took my freedom. You're afraid to walk down the street. You're afraid to meet people. Yeah, there's so, so many people who are affected by this. They thought they were so cool. They had masks, other people bought them their guns, and they thought if they carjacked in Covington and went to Deep Park, the police would never figure it out. That's just not the way it happens. Yeah. They had so many agencies working with the ATF, they had to use a classroom at the police academy and get together and share all the information, then peel it all away to this gang. Which is, takes a high level of training, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's, it. you know, Sergeant Lusick. He's the guy, that's what he's known for. And on another note, it's his last day 
at the Cincinnati Police Department. He's retiring, and Cincinnati's going to miss him. They may yeah, not no know kidding. how much yet, but they're going to miss him. Good cop. Uh, his father was a good cop, too. Yeah, it's a good family. There is one man still on the run tonight. We need to tell you about this. His name is Christopher Sisk. Sergeant Halusa calls him public enemy number one. He's indicted on three federal charges. Police say he was involved in a shooting on Dayton Street recently where two people were shot. There is a $2,500 Wheel of Justice reward paid out through Crime Stoppers if you can help find him.